In this video, I'm going to share with you 10 different t-shirt design styles. Let's go. Thanks for joining me on this video. My name is Juna with Detour Shirts, a channel all about helping you design and sell t-shirts online. If that's something you like to do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button right there. So in this video, I'm going to share with you 10 different design styles that you can do on t-shirts. So if you're trying to build your brand, one of the things that you'd want to do is try and find your own art style, your own t-shirt design style. And if you look at some of the best selling people on Redbubble and other POD shops, you'll notice that they have their own style. And just by looking at their artwork, you can say that this one is this person's style, this is another person's style, just by looking at it because they've defined their style, their brand around a certain style. So why that's important for you when you're building your brand is if you're known for a particular style, the next time you do something, people will wanna buy that too. So the way I'm gonna help you with that is I'm gonna show you 10 different styles. And the hope is that by sharing these styles with you, you'll kind of figure out what your style is. It doesn't have to be exactly one of these styles. It could be a mashup of two or three of these styles together but you'll find your own style that resonates with you and start building your brand, start building your style, your t-shirt design style that people will recognize you for and wanna buy more of. You're gonna to wanna to stay till the end so that you can see all 10 styles as well as another edition of Trend Credits. So let's get started. So one of the places you can go to find different t-shirt styles is this place designbyhumans.com. Designbyhumans.com is another print on demand shop that I use to sell my artwork on here. You can see lots of really cool artwork. Designers and artists love to come here. Uh, they got some fan artwork as well. So you can see just some cool designs here. So when you're on here and you add a design, Design by Humans ask you what art style you're doing. And so I'm gonna show you some of the categories that you can pick. So here I am on the edit screen, uh, the last screen when you upload your design. And you can see here when you add a category, one of the things you can pick is art styles right here, the second one. And when you click on art styles, you'll see all the different art styles right there. So as you can see, there's 21 different styles. I don't have time to share all 21, but I picked the 10 that I think are most important to learn some different ones. Uh, if you want me to make another video to show the other 11, let me know in the comments, but uh, we're gonna go and look at some of these 10 so that you can see the different styles for each one and maybe pick your favorite, one or two of them, and start there and then create your style from that. So let's get started. So the first style is 8-bit. You can see I typed in 8-bit here in the search and these are the results for 8-bit. You can see they look very similar, right? A lot of them have to do with video games, that old style video game looking with the pixel that's very pixelated, made out of squares, you can see right here. Uh, if I do a search on Google for 8-bit t-shirts, you can see kind of the same thing, just this pixelated version of people or objects, that kind of thing. Old video games, right right here. So look for these characteristics for an 8-bit t-shirt. They're usually video game related, but not always. And the designs are made with tiny little squares or pixels, you can see right here, little squares that make up the design. So the audience of people that love to wear these kinds of shirts are usually people who grew up in the 80s or just love 80s culture, that pop culture, those old video games, that kind of things. So that is your t-shirt art style number one, 8-bit. So art style number two that I wanted to share is abstract. So abstract can just represent anything. It doesn't actually have to represent mountains and bears like you see here, but it can. You can see these mountains don't look exactly like mountains. They're kind of an abstract version of mountains, but you can just have shapes. You can just have lines. Abstract really doesn't have to mean anything or look like anything. So here's some ideas from Google when you look up abstract design t-shirts. You can see here lots of different shapes and colors, you know, right here. So here's an example of abstract art, right? Designs that don't exactly look like anything. They can, they can represent stuff, but they don't have to. So think shapes, lines, and colors. There really are no rules for abstract art. So the audience 
are, I think, are people who like nice abstract art. Usually there's no words on here. It's just an art piece. So people that love to go to museums and like to look at abstract art, they're probably the same people that want to wear abstract uh, designs on their t-shirt. So that is your art style number two, abstract. So art style number three is collage. So you can see these are some of the results for collage on uh, designed by humans. Usually when people think of collage, they think of cutting out different pictures in a magazine and kind of putting them all together to make a nice design. That's kind of what this is. You can see different pieces of artwork. Here are different pieces of the face, different photographs, different things, art pieces put together. Uh, in Google, when you search collage t-shirts, you can see here, this is a great one. Think of your own version of things that you want to put together. Maybe you're drawing different uh, animals and putting them all together. Maybe you're drawing different plants. Uh, lots of different ways to do this. Um, see right here, these are different animals put together in a collage. They, they kind of just all work together, right? So here are the characteristics of a collage. If you want to do this art style, it's usually a mashup of different pictures and or styles. You can see right here is a good example. And it's nice if it has a theme, but it doesn't have to have a theme. You can just put things randomly together. And the audience, I think it depends on what your collage is about. So you saw the collage about different animals. Of course, those are going to be for people who love animals. If you did a collage uh, of, you know, unicorns and rainbows, of course, those are that. So try different topics, maybe outdoors, political, pop culture. Those do well. Animals, again, like we saw in, in different ones. So this is a great one if uh, you want to try and kind of mash up things. Uh, this is art style number three collage so art style number four is geometric you can kind of see a crossover between geometric and abstract but geometric definitely has more lines and corners so think polygons you know triangles those kinds of things it doesn't necessarily have to have a lot of straight lines but more often than not they do have lots of straight lines let's look in google so geometric again shapes squares lots of triangles these kinds of shapes together, which, you know, is is still geometric in nature. So a lot of times they are just shapes, but sometimes they're shapes that make an object. So you can see here shapes that make a mountain, shapes again making a mountain. So here are the characteristics of geometric style. You can see using different shapes to create a design. Uh, shapes can represent other things, but they don't have to. In this case, these shapes are representing mountains and bears and a sun. But like you saw in some of the other examples, they can be more abstract and not represent anything. So kind of a crossover between geometric and abstract, but they're not exactly the same. So the audience of people that would love to wear geometric things, I think they're usually people who love math or technology or art. Uh, that's just my, in my opinion, but usually those go together. Um, trying to make things with polygons and, and shapes like that. Usually people who love that are people who love these kinds of things as well. So if you like making geometric shapes and doing those kinds of artwork, maybe this style is for you. So this is art style number four, geometric. So art style number four is minimalist. So you can see right here, uh, these are different types of minimalist designs. So usually solid shapes, lines, lots of lines. So a lot more white space right here. You can see making designs with lines, but overall there's not a lot of fill. So that lots more white space in these designs. You can see here, this is a minimalist face. Um, let me show you some other examples on Google for minimalist designs. Uh, it can contain text as well, but you can see way more white space than the actual design, so very minimal. So minimalist is the simplest way to kind of get that idea across. So for Harry Potter, just the eyeglasses and the lightning scar right here, that's all you need is very minimal. So these are some of the characteristics for a minimalist design. Usually uses lines and or shapes to create a design, simple designs, but with a lot of white space. You can see not a lot of fill, just lines. And lines usually represent other things, but they don't need to. So the audience for this is people who either love the outdoors or abstract art pieces or both. Uh, this is really popular with outdoor t-shirts for some reason. You can see a lot of the designs that I showed you had mountains and water and just 
outdoor themes. And this is really trendy right now, really popular right now. So if you want to do some of this kind of designs or if you love just drawing simple shapes to represent other things, then maybe your style is minimalist. You can try that out. It does really well, uh, especially on Design by Humans, but other places too. So it could make great stickers. You've probably seen these kinds of things. So your style number five is minimalist. So art style number six is dark art. So you can see right here, usually a lot of skulls, skeletons, um, just witchcraft, that kind of thing. Um, witches, demons, you can see here a lot of horror kind of vibes you're going to get here. So you can see here on Google as well, usually a black t-shirt or a white t-shirt. So again, lots of skulls here, cards, you know. Think of uh, just scary stuff. May not be scary to some, but uh, usually, you know, witchcraft, that kind of thing. So here are some of the characteristics for a dark art style. Usually the designs have skeletons or witchcraft or horror based, that kind of thing. Um, usually black on white or white on black, but sometimes they use colors. And if they do, they're not bright colors. They're usually muted colors. You can see here kind of this muted red. Uh, and the audience are, I think, are people who love witches or demons or magic and that kind of horror movies, that kind of thing. So this is art style number six, dark art. So this style is patterns. So you can see I search for patterns. A lot of times you may think patterns that fill up the whole t-shirt, but it doesn't have to. You can see this pattern fills up the whole iPhone case, but um, in this case, the pattern is inside of the design. So right here, these are really cool and popular right now too. So you can see the shape is filled with the pattern, right? And the pattern right here. And different patterns have different feelings you can see. So this one has multiple patterns in one design. You can see other ideas of patterns. So let's look at pattern design on Google. You can see kind of filling the sh shirt. There's some other kinds of patterns depending on what kind of patterns you use. Uh, there's some tribal patterns, right? You can see here, definitely different genre of patterns. So these are some of the characteristics you might be looking for if you're deciding to do patterns as your t-shirt style. Patterns can be the entire design of the t-shirt, the full t-shirt, or it can just be inside the shapes of your design. The types of patterns you use can change the feel of the design, right? So if this had a different pattern in here, it may appeal to a different type of audience. So. That's why the audience depends on the types of patterns you use. So tribal patterns can appeal to a certain group and other patterns could appeal to different groups. So think about that when doing this design style. This can be really powerful. So if there's certain patterns that you're known for, you can really create a strong brand with this style. So, so patterns, this is your art style number seven. So an art style you may not be familiar with is pinup. So basically these are vintage illustrations of girls that people would pin up on the wall. So that's how the name became pinup. So you can see here, very vintage looking designs, mainly from the like 40s and 50s. So that's where these this comes from. So these are the characteristics of a pinup design. So pinup art is a style from the 1940s. So it refers to illustrations of glamour models that would be pinned up on the wall. That's kind of where the name came from. And it should kind of have that vintage feel. So you can see here is very vintage, like it was made in the 40s and 50s. So the audience for this, I think, are people who like this specific type of vintage art. So topics usually include cars, military, planes, gambling, tattoos, that kind of thing. So very niche very um, vintage retro kind of feel. So that is your art style number eight. So the next art style is called street art. And it's just like it says, it's art that you would find on the streets, maybe painted on the wall or somewhere like that. You can see a lot of times it uses like spray paint brushes, that kind of things, uh, a lot of graffiti and stuff. So you can see some of them can be abstract. It depends. So here are some ideas uh, from Google when you do street art design t-shirts you can see graffiti bright colors that kind of thing hand-drawn lettering so a lot of this spray paint dripping that kind of thing some of the characteristics you would want to look for when you're doing street art so they're usually created with visual elements of graffiti and other urban themes and usually has a spray paint splatter you can see here on the board spray paint splatter and custom lettering 
So that kind of graffiti lettering, kind of bubble lettering sometimes. Uh, the audience are mainly those who love that big city street art, that kind of culture. So there's definitely a culture around this. If you really know this culture, this could be a really good one for you to do. This is art style number nine, street art. So the last art style I wanted to share with you in this video is tattoo. So you can see here, really cool designs. I think this one's kind of trending right now too. Um, usually black on white. So you can see some of these tattoos. Basically tattoos that you would want to put on your body, just put it on a shirt. So you can see here, just really cool ideas, flowers, you know, dragons, that kind of thing, skulls. Let's look on Google here. These are some other tattoo, very cool tattoo art. So I think if you can draw this kind of tattoo art, these could be really cool on t-shirts right now. So here are some of the characteristics for that tattoo art style. Designs that people would wanna wear as tattoos. So this could make a great tattoo, but it's also on a t-shirt. So there's usually detailed line art, you know, mainly black on white or white on black, but sometimes you can have color and fill it in with color, just like a tattoo would. And the audience are people who love tattoo art, right? People who love like these kind of styles with hearts and daggers and flowers and those kinds of things. So uh, just study. If you love tattoos, this might be a good style for you uh, because you already know that kind of culture and that kind of art style. So I would study this and look into making different things on here for tattoo. This could be your style that stands out. So uh, this is art style number 10, tattoo. So here's the recap of all the 10 art styles that I shared with you today. You can see right here taken from the 21. Again, if you wanna learn more about the other 11, let me know in the comments and I can do another video like this, but these are the 10 that we talked about today. You can mix and match these two. If you find a couple that you like, um, maybe come up with your own style that's a mashup of a couple of these. So uh, you could mash up tattoo with geometric, you know, maybe put a pattern in a tattoo thing like, this could be really cool for you. So take a look at these styles, figure out which one like calls to you or feels good to you and look at some of the other ones too. You can just do a Google search on, on some of those and come up with your own style that's unique to you. And when you start doing that and get better and better at it, you're gonna start doing stuff that is your own style. And when people look for you, they're gonna know that that is your style and you can stand out with that. And when, pe when you make more things, people are gonna wanna get those new things. So that's one way to build brand is to come up with your own style that's uniquely you and, um, and that people like to buy. So, so that is it for this video. Hopefully these art styles are really helpful for you. Let me know in the comments if it was. Let me know what your favorite art style was in this video and leave that in the comments as well. So thanks so much for watching and your reward is another edition of Trend Credits. Thanks for staying to the end for this trend credit. Here is your trend, Bad Moms Club. You can see here, lots of low BSRs, Bad Moms Club, Mom Life, Bad Moms Club. Uh, this will just get better and better for Mother's Day. So get on this now before it gets closer to Mother's Day. Uh, you're gonna wanna check Merch Informer, of course, and it is getting an A, so you know it's good. If you don't have Merch Informer already, I have a link in the description for Merch Informer. Uh, there's some discounts going on in there, so uh, really good for competition checker and other things. So the trend for today in this video, Bad Moms Club. Uh, think of different ways you can do this. You, you can see it's not always just saying Bad Moms Club. You can see proud member of Moms Club and uh, wine approved after Moms Club. So there's different ways you can do this. Think of your own way and your own style. Uh, to make this trend and maybe there's some other phrases too that work with this so uh, That is your trend bad moms club. So good luck with this one. Have fun with this one bad moms club is your trend for this video Thanks so much for watching again and don't forget to like and subscribe if this video gave you some value Give it a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed already hit that subscribe button right in the corner right here You could do it right now if you want to so Thanks again for watching, and as always guys, keep creating and keep learning. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.